in this model, if human RBC given parasite, over time, the percentage of rat cells infected increase from 40, 48 hours to 94, 96 hours. If we add NK cells in the culture, so the, so the, the infection is, is largely controlled. If we put the human NK cells in the transfer well, so the soluble factor can pass through, but there's no cell, cell contact. You can see now it, it, it's not controlled. So this requires cell, cell, cell contact. By, by investigating, so we also uh, analyzed what are the uh, uh, NK cell receptors or the, or the parasite or molecules <coughs> which NK cell can recognize. So, so surprisingly, by blocking the, the known the, the NK cell activation receptors, it does not have much effect at all. However, if we block the adhesion molecules like uh, LFA1 and uh, DNAM, so, it, 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 so the NK cell does not control the infection anymore. The cell, this again emphasizes the cell cell contact is important. So, we also uh, analyze how this is involved. But we, we found that when NK cells is co-cultured with the infected RBC, they stay, they, the cell form conjugate for, for a long time. If we block, use antibody block LFA1, now they, they do not form, form, form contact. This contact formation is important for the activation, activation of naive, na, na, naive NK cells. And this is uh, 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 blocked if we use anti anti F one antibody. Now we also have some idea what are the what are, what are the uh, NK cell receptors and what are potential uh, pa pathogen uh, uh, motifs. This is uh, recognized. So using, using this model, we have also evaluated uh, uh, potential monoclonal antibodies, which can be used for for, for treating uh, treating infection. Just to give you one example, showing that during the, when the uh, um, when parasite infect RBC red blood cells, the parasite yields its, its receptor called uh, uh, RH5, which recognizes a protein expressed on, on RBC called uh, called bacigen. This infection is required for the parasite to get, get into the, in, into the RBC. So in collaboration with uh, Peter Prizo and, and, and Gavin Wright. So they have developed antibody either against the bacigen or against RH5. So we use this monoclonal antibody in this system to see how effective they can control the infection. So we generated humanized mice, did the infection, and then give mice either with anti-bacigen antibody, this is against the host, or against the, a, a, a parasite a, a, a receptor RH5 over five days and assayed assay the, the level of a parasitemia. So in the control, given PBS, you can see the parasite level is high. If we're given the mice with anti bacigen antibody, so initially before day 19, the first day, the infection is high, but quickly the, the parasite level dropped, it, it, uh, dropped enormously. But given the antibody against RH5, although there's inhibition, but the drop is not as, as dramatic. So, RH5 has been one of the favorite candidates for, uh, uh, for vaccine, de for, for vaccine de de development. But in all the study, it, 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 it has not worked well. So essentially, our, in our study, using purified RH5 antibody can recapitulate that effect. This is partly, most likely, is that RH5 is only expressed on the, on the parasite. In very, in, very, in very short time. So probably there's not enough time to really neutralize them. But on the other hand, by using anti-bacigen, anti-host uh, receptor, it, it works much better. So you may wonder, if you use anti-host, you, you may have some side effect. But that, clearly, that's not, that's not a major concern. Because anti-bacigen antibody was initially developed to treat, uh, to, uh, to, to treat cancer. So it does not have much side effect, although it does not have much effect on, 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 uh, in, in killing cancer either. So this point out the possibility this could be potentially used. So the other story, I, 
I want to, I want to discuss is to use the, the humanized mice to develop mice with human cancer and autologous human immune system in the same mouse to study a, a basic aspect as well as for, for cancer, cancer immunotherapy. So the way we do it is that we started by modeling different blood cancer cells. We started with a CD34 positive human hematopoietic stem cells using antivirus to introduce proton oncogenes identified from human into the cells and then engraft the mixture into the, into the mice. And the transduced cells give rise to tumor, the non-transduced cells give rise to the, to the matched immune system in the same mouse. So this can be used to, uh, to study, uh, can evaluate the, uh, potential cancer immunotherapeutics, but also study uh, 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 human immune cell, cancer cell e e e interaction. And also, this also gave a, a possibility to start the early event of human tumor genesis. Because as in human, by the time patient shows up in the hospital, the early event has already o o occurred. By regenerating the, the, uh, uh, the, the tumor, de novo generated human tumor in the mouse, we can potentially uh, start the early event as well. So I want to use an example using human, uh, human uh, AML, my, uh, acute myeloid leukemia. So this is a major uh, disease. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, 36 percent of all the leukemia in the U.S. alone each year. That's 20,000 20, new, new cases. If you multiply by 20, so in, in the whole world, it's around it's around 400,000 400, new cases each year. So the, one of the key mutation in this uh, in this uh, AML is the uh, uh, is a nuclear phosph nuclear phosphine is a mutation which. Which the, the, the protein is now is translocated in, in, in the cytosol. It occurs in, in the 30 percent of adult cases. And the, another major thing about the leukemia is that the so-called leukemia stem cells, which by mutation in the uh, in the early progenitors, which give rise to more, more, more uh, mature uh, tumor cells. And the, the, however, the leukemia stem cells is hard to 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 to, to, to treat. And there's no good, good the chemotherapy does not tolerate well. Even with the bone marrow transplant, this only works for, for around 10% for around patient. So what we did is to use, uh, use an antivirus, either express GFP alone, or GFP plus the uh, mutant version of uh, MPM1 transduce into the uh, 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 stem cells and make humanized mice. So we use uh, GFP mice uh, as control, either express GFP alone or GFP plus, uh, plus MPM1. If you look at the percentage of GFP plus of human cells, there's no, no, no difference. In, in the proof of blood, also if you look at the myeloid cells, however, the, the myeloid cells, the percentage is higher. So more, most importantly, 100% of mice die from, from by when they are tra transduced with, with lantivirus expressing GVP and MPM1. So this is because they all, they all develop, they all, they all de develop uh, AML. So, the, so these are shown over here. So this is just the, this is a blood smear just from the control mice. And in, in the gene mice, the uh, tumor bearing mice, you, you can see the large cells. This is because of the AML tend to have the uh, uh, tend to have the blast in the peripheral blood as well as in, in, in the bone marrow. So in, if you compare it in the spleen size, the normal humanized mice, the spleen is much smaller. And also, the tumor bearing mice, the, the bone, bone is much pale. This is because there are so many tumor cells in the bone that drive the, they drive the, the red cells up. So if you look at the, 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 the phenotype of, of the compared the phenotype of human cells in the normal mice and the tumor bearing mice in the bone marrow, almost most of cells in the bone marrow are from human. The, the significant number express the GFP, but in the tumor bearing mice, there's a lot of more higher percentage of the higher percentage of of CD33 positive, CD13 positive myeloid cells. And these are uh, shown. These are shown. Uh, if, I, if I can get a slide, these are shown in in the in the in the comparison within the GFP past cells. The myeloid cells in the tumor bearing mice is higher. If you look at the, in the GFP next cells, that uh, there's no difference. 
and the, these tumors are these tumors are, are aggressive. So the, the, this in by actually staining, you, you see tumor cells in the bone marrow spleen, but they can metastasis in our other organs. If we transfer the cells from spleen into a secondary mice, they, they, they can cause the disease much faster. So they, the aggressive tumor. We uh, extensively phenotype, the, phenotype the, 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 the tumor cells. So this is very similar, have a similar phenotype as, the, as, the, as, the, as, AML, as AML from patient. We also did a, a transcription analysis by whole genome-wide analysis. They also uh, they're very similar to, 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 to patient, patient uh, AML as well. In addition, in this mice, we can also generate a, a generate a leukemia, generate a leukemia stem cells as well. Uh, as well, the leukemia stem cells they are CD one twenty three positive and the CD thirty eight positive. So depending on, on other markers, they either some of them positive for CD thirty four. As well as, as well as for for CD thirty three. So in addition, these mice they also have a matched autologous human immune system in the mouse. So this is a control mice and the tumor bearing mice in the spleen. That's CD three positive T cells, CD CD nineteen positive B cells. That's a small number of of of, of natural killer cells as well. So with these mice, it offers us the possibility to evaluate uh, uh, cancer immunotherapies that require the presence of, of the human immune system. So in collaboration with, uh, in collaboration with Janssen Pharmaceutical, we evaluated two versions of the, of the bi-specific uh, uh, antibody. So in this case, it's one side of the antibody binds to, to CD3, the other side binds to, binds to CD123. The, the leukemia, the, uh, the leukemia stem cell marker will have two different versions, either bispecific without FC portion, so it's a bispecific conjugate, or the full, full length antibody version, bispecific antibody. So the idea is that by one side of CD3 binding to, to T cells and active T cells, and the other side of CD123 binding to leukemia stem cells, you can recruit the T cells into proximity to, to the leukemia stem cells, and the T cells can, 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 ki can kill the tumor cells. So what we did is to in, the, in this mice, we bleed the mice uh, before, the, before the treatment, and, and then just uh, 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 over a week, one, uh, every day, give a, a one microgram of, uh, of IV injection of the bi-specific conjugate. So this is without, without the FC, and then analyze at the day eight as well as, as, well as the day, the, the day 17. So these are shown over here. So we analyze in the blood the level of a CD123 positive, positive leukemia stem cells. We ask in the same, same time the CD3 positive human T cells as well. So let's focus on the, in, the, in, the, in the control with untreated mice. Untreated mice, the leukemia stem cells during this time period does not change much. The T cells does not change much, not surprisingly. So if we're given the bi-specific conjugate, so you can see that Without, before treatment, the, the, the leukemia stem cells is high. After treatment, at the day eight, it, it, it dramatically decreased. But by, by day 17, the level increased again. Although during this time, the level of T cells does not change much. So we also want to test whether this is a T cell dependent process or not by using OKT3 to deplete, to deplete human T cells. So these are shown by the red, red triangles. So this is before treatment, after, immediately uh, uh, eight days after treatment. Now, if you deplete T cells, now you, you, you do not see this, do not see this, do not see this therapeutic effect. By, by day 17, the T cell level start to increase, so the, the tumor burden is still the same. So indicating this is depends on the, on the presence of T cells. We also, we also use RF-17 to boost, the, to boost the T cell level and function. So these are shown over here. By before treatment, the, the leukemia stem cell uh, 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 level, after 
after treatment, the level uh, decreases enormously. Correspondingly, the, there's a level of the T cells increase as well. So this is by measuring in the peripheral blood the, the, the level of leukemia stem cell over time in the same mouse. We also, once we kill the mice at day 17, we can assess the tumor leukemia stem cell burden in the, in the bone marrow as well. So here we can see, we can see it was that with, with control, CD3 now, the, the, the burden, the level of leukemia stem cell is much higher if we, than the mice which, which has been treated with the, with the, with the bi-specific conjugate, which binds to CD3 and, this, and, and, and the CD123. CD, CD so we are curious, you know, during this treatment, that really the level of the T cells in, in the blood did, did not change much. We want to know whether they are, they are actually activated or not. So this is shown over here. Using CD45 RA, this measure the naive human T cells, or CD45 RO, this measure uh, effect of mem uh, memory, uh, memory T cells. In, in the, in the, just uh, in the PBS or treatment, the, the naive cell level is higher. Once you, you inject a BFC, the naive cell level decreased, but correspondingly, the, the activated or the effect cell, cell level increased. So indicating that, although you don't see the T cell number change dramatically in, in the periphery, but the, the T cell, uh, uh, T cell, ha, T cell ha, ha, has been, has been uh, activated. So the other way to show that this is really directing T cells killing the tumor cells directly, we did the assay in, in, in the culture. So we use purified T cells as well as, 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 well as tumor cells. And in the presence of the uh, BFC uh, with incubation, as you can see, without BFC, that's a, that's a, the, the, the tumor cells survive is fine. Once you add BFC, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the survival is much less. So in this case, there's only tumor cells and T cells. So it most likely is this a direct effect, directly recruiting T cells to kill tumor cells. So the other thing I mentioned earlier, with this BFC by day 17, so the, the, the tumor, the, the tum leukemia cell, stem cell is already up. So we, we tested whether the full length antibody is more potent or not. This is indeed is the case. So in this case, we use a full length by specific antibody or just with anti-CD123 once one arm or the, or the anti-CD3 on the other arm. This is treated my, although the number of mice are relatively small, but all the mice treated with, the, with full length by substance antibody, uh, they, uh, they all survived. But on, in contrast, the, 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 the half of molecules that, that does not work well. So it looks like a full length, full length by substance antibody is much more effective. So in order to not only that, so full length antibody, they can also they also deplete the myeloid cells, human myeloid cells as well. These are shown over here. So with the full length antibody, the leukemia stem cell, leukemia stem cell level decreased compared to the half molecule. But if you just look at all the human uh, uh, myeloid cells, they they, they also de de decrease as well. So that's why we only use we only inject three doses. Because what we notice, as soon as we inject a full length antibody, the, uh, uh, the, uh, this mice loses weight. But they, but, but they the, so because of the side effect, probably the side effect, but they, but, but they, they can be killed. So in fact, this uh, CD3, CD123 by antibody has been tested in, in human as well. In human, what a, one of the major side effects is, is depleting or the depleting, depleting, <coughs> depleting the human Depleting, depleting human myeloid cells. So what we are able to show here is that this model not only can e evaluate the efficacy, we can recap, re re recapitulate the, uh, the, the side effect in human, uh, uh, in human as well. So uh, uh, we in, in, so because of lack of time, I will just quickly go through this. We also purified the leukemia stem cells and the more mature leukemia cells and they did transcription analysis. That's how we show this uh, de novo generated uh, AML in mice. They, they resemble human tumors. So for example, one of the key genes, which is uh, signature genes uh, expressed in the, in the AML are the, are the Hux genes. So they are, they are they're the ones that are highly expressed in, in, the, in the leukemia cells. In addition, what we found is that we found the MIC, 
is is a, a highly is upper regulated uh, during the transition from leukemia stem cells to more mature le le leukemia. So by using the uh, MIC the the, the MIC inhibitor JK1, we can shield e, 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 uh, uh, in vitro so that the leukemia cells they are, uh, leukemia cells they are more they, they, they can be they, they can be killed by the by the by the inhibitor but the, that the normal normal cells from the control mass uh, they, they cannot. So, and in addition, they, the JK1 seems can synergize w w w with the bispecific conjugate to 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 e eliminate uh, uh, tumor cells as well. So by using this approach, we can potentially identify new target which which can be combined w w with immunotherapy as well. So as I mentioned that. So although the bispecific uh, antibody w w works very well by targeting the leukemia stem cell, but the side effect we can see it in, in, in the humanized mice as well. It would be nicer to have a, a more tumor s s s to targeting the, targeting, targeting the tumor cells, not targeting the all, all the myeloid cells. So it turned out is that the, the NPM1C mutation, it generated a neo, c neo CD8 antigen. So th th this is presented by by by, by the pr presented by by class one, but by, by class one A A two. In fact, a previous study has shown that in in human patients, people who have the can be stained, the T cells can be stained by by by, the, by this tetramer, they they they, uh, they do much better than the patient who do not. So indicating this may, may actually, in, even in a natural uh, development ML, these uh, T cells play an important role. So in collaboration with, uh, with Dan Wittrup's group, using the case of East uh, display technology, we have now identified FAB, the antibody fragment, which can recognize this CD8 epitope presented, by, uh, presented by, by class one. So what we would like to do uh, moving forward is to either develop a specific antibody, one side, Recognize this tumor, the new antigen. The other side uh, recognize uh, CD3, or make this uh, make this as the CAR T cell, uh, make this as the CAR T cells. So targeting the CAR T cells, targeting the targeting the tumor specific antigen. So that's what we we are doing. And by ability to generate the ML uh, ML tumor with the matching human immune system, this will be ideal to 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 test them as well. So uh, qu quickly summarize what I discussed today. So, so it's possible to generate, uh, to reconsider functional human e e immune system in mice by stem cell engraftment and expression of human cytokines. And this humanized mice can be used to model, model uh, 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 disease mediated by, by human cells. I gave you two examples. One is AML by human cells in, in the mouse, and the other one is malaria parasite infection. And we, this can be used to study study a basic mechanism of a disease development, and more importantly, they can be used to test the potential efficacy of, of therapeutics, especially those required a human immune system. So, so this, uh, this work has been, uh, has been, many people and collaborators has been involved. The AML work was, uh, uh, is primarily done by Mandeep Kerr, who, who has a poster uh, outside as well. So if you have any question, please ask her. So the, with help from, from, uh, from other people in the lab, and we have a, a close collaboration, 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 collaboration with Janssen. And with the initial humanized mouse de development, optimization, and the malaria uh, 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 parasite infection was done by a former poster, Chen Feng Chen, who since has, has established his own lab. We collaborated with many people in, uh, in, in, in Singapore, uh, Peter Prizel, and, uh, uh, and people from other places. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much.